So, you know, I'm on a typical business trip. I'm running between gates of Dulles Airport trying to make a connection. I got my wheelie behind me. I got my cell phone in my ear, my backpack on my shoulder. Anyway, I'm talking to my president and CEO, Kent Murdoch. We're talking about this, that, and the other thing. I finally shut off the phone looking for the gate where I'm supposed to go when my phone immediately rings again. This time it's my wife. You know, that's the phone call you take no matter who you're talking to or where you are. She says, hey, Chess, you're not going to believe what just happened. A guy delivered 24 beautiful orange roses to our door. At first, I thought they were from you. <laughs> of course, I knew they weren't and became very curious as to who they were from. <laughs> she said they're from your boss, Ken Murdoch, your CEO. 24 beautiful orange roses. Isn't that sweet? And the little card said, Heidi, a little something for you for all the little things you do at home so Chester can do big things for us on the road. How great is that? How do you think that made my wife feel about the work I do? How do you think it made me feel about my boss and what he does for me and my family? But here's the kicker. As we're wrapping up the conversation, she says, where are you? I said, well, honey, I'm running to catch a gate, you know, so I can make my connection. She said, well, don't you dare miss that flight. Those are good people you're working for. <laughs> See, a little bit of appreciation. It just flat out works. In business, it always comes down to the bottom line, doesn't it? And what I'm here to tell you, and I hope you walk away with, is that recognizing and appreciating your employees just isn't something nice to do. It's now an essential part of keeping and engaging your best people. It will get you from good to great faster if you understand the principles of recognition. It's not allegorical anymore. The numbers are irrefutable. Managers that give recognition, that build better teams, get to their business goals faster. It is an accelerant to your business goals. Chester Elton is the author of several New York Times best-selling books that have been translated into 20 languages and are sold in more than 50 countries worldwide. In his acclaimed keynote presentations and workshops, Chester unveils the findings of one of the largest research studies ever undertaken, including groundbreaking interviews with over 200,000 employees and managers. He has appeared on numerous television and radio programs, including National Public Radio, CNN, and 60 Minutes. He's often quoted in leading business publications around the world. And no matter where Chester appears, his audiences want more. How much control has a manager or supervisor got over your comp and benefits? Because if that's the key relationship, I mean, if somebody's doing a great job for you, can you walk up and say, you know, you, customer service, you rock. I'm going to double your salary. Nope, whatever it is, just times two, that's you now. You know, can, can, can your manager or supervisor do that? No, he's going to be lucky to get that 2.365% raise everybody else is getting. <laughs> or you ever say, listen, when it comes to teamwork, you, you rock. You are going to get just a little better dental plan. See what I'm saying? Because you, not that you need it. <laughs> you got a great smile, but I've seen your kids. You know, they're a mess. Um, right? Can, can, can you do that? No. You know, comp and benefits, that's pretty much standard, right? You pretty much pay within 5 or 10% of what everybody else is paying, right? Now, how much control has your manager or supervisor got of a workplace environment? 100%. 100%. Now, we train like crazy, right, on the dentists you can go to and the medical plans and all that kind of stuff. How much do we train on creating that workplace environment, that power of the care? Chester was simply outstanding. He delivered both the steak and the sizzle. If you're going to write down one thing, write this down. General praise has no impact on people. For example, if you're working for me and... I don't know why you're sitting at this table all by yourself. I'm sure there's a story. Um, if, if, if you're working for me and, and your name is Chuck, and I say, hey, Chuck, listen, I really appreciate you staying late last night. You know, we were short-staffed. It was bad weather. You came in. You chipped in. That's leadership. That's teamwork. That's customer service. You stayed late. You took time away from your family. That is an awesome job. We value that here at AAP. Thanks so much for staying late. That was awesome. Big difference, right, from love the hair. <laughs> It's like another 10 seconds, right? Why is specificity so important? Because what you reward gets repeated. What you reward gets repeated. So if you reward great customer service, you'll get more great customer service. It's the habit of finding people doing the right thing and then recognizing it immediately. Okay, and the last thing that you said goes a long way is a handwritten personal note. This one gets a lot of play. And I always ask people, well, why do you save the handwritten note and not the blast emails? And their answer is, is that it's personal. There's something about taking that extra time. And it takes, by the way, I've timed it. It's 90 seconds to write a handwritten thing. Yeah, and that's even if you're moving your lips, you know, while you're at it. Chester excites audiences by making recognition fun. 
Our company is better because of Chester's involvement. What's really funny is when HR asks people when they leave, what are you leaving for? What do you think the number one answer is to the company? I'm leaving for more what? Money. Why do we say that? It's politically acceptable, right? I'm leaving for more money. Oh, yeah, they're doubling my salary. Oh, yeah, it's a big box. I'm going to be running the place in two years. Oh, they want me bad. They want me bad. And you know the guy, right? And you go, who are you kidding? You're lucky to have a job. <laughs> now, think about it, because there are those people that do get 15, 20% raises, right? So if the average is 3 to 5%, what it means is people will take less money to get away from a bad manager. Seriously, they will take a cut in pay to get away from you, pal. <laughs> Yeah, now, I'm just using you as an example. <laughs> but there, you know, there has been some talk. The New York Times calls him refreshing and creative. Canada's Globe and Mail calls him the apostle of appreciation. And organizations worldwide are calling him an absolute necessity, proving it is possible for organizations to increase employee retention, motivation, and accelerated workplace performance. He's called by many the world authority on employee engagement and recognition. In a lot of organizations I talk to, they go, Chester, I get the thank you part, but if I say it too much, it becomes rote, it becomes trite, it, does, it loses its meaning. Can you hear a thank you too much? Just by a show of hands, just, how many of you consider yourselves right now madly in love? Okay, happily married. Yes, sir. Okay, happily married, madly in love. Okay, big, you know, he's got his hand way up high. You, sir, right here in the blue. Come on up on stage. So you are madly in love. Yes. And happily married. Yes. Same woman. Yes. Bonus. So your wife's name is? Brenda. Brenda, how long have you been married? 15 years. 15 years. Give it up. 15 years. <laughs> so, uh, let me ask you something. How often do you tell Brenda you love her? Oh, 50 times a day. <laughs> no, sir. No, I, yeah, so am I. Come on, tell the truth. All the time. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I do this for a living, pal. <laughs> what if you just did something like, I don't know, like an annual banquet? You see what I'm saying? Just like once a year load up. Forget Valentine's, forget the anniversary's birthday. It's too complicated. Once a year load up. Wouldn't it be better? No. Yeah. You think she'd go for it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> see, we get this in our personal lives, right? I love you in our personal lives translates to thank you in the workplace. It's really that simple. Now, it's, it's thank you in the workplace. It's I love you in your personal life. Now, don't get that mixed up. Chester's presentation hammered home the point that recognition is an effective way to engage the hearts and minds of the entire workforce. What I love about what we do is that we make work more rewarding. You know, and when you love what you do and you love who you do it with, you just do it better. Intrinsically, we know that to be true. But what I like about the carrot principle is that we proved it empirically. We surveyed over 200,000 employees and proved the fact that when you feel appreciated and engaged, you accelerate business results. So give us a call. We'll come in, we'll have some fun, and I promise you, we'll make a difference.